friends, and welcome back for another chapter of Don't Feed the Bully. So last time in chapter 10, which was a really short chapter, and chapter 11 is also pretty short, but in chapter 10, Handy went to go check on Anson, the kid who got um, mace in his eyes from his glasses, and he goes back to class and he finds a note on his desk, and it says, same time, same place, my allowance. And that's where we left off. So I wonder who wrote him the note. What do you all think? I think I have an idea. And we're going to find out in chapter 11. Are you ready? Okay. Chapter 11. It's too much, Handy, Kayla said as we sipped our Slurpees on the weathered pigeon potty that doubled as a picnic bench near Mr. Fresh. You could have gotten expelled. Ralphie piped in. And that and the fat Kurt doesn't care who gets hurt means he will try anything. It's time to pull back and ride out the year, man. I knew they'd be stunned when I weaved my tale of locker room excitement with the janitor, the troll head, Zack, the plastic knife, and their connection with Anson Summerhead. I didn't know they would be worried enough about me to want to stop. It felt good. I get you, but even if I wanted to stop, I couldn't, I said. Kirk won't stop until he silences me, and the only way to do that is by getting me in trouble. My credibility is higher than ever, and Kurt is seething with hate and fear. A mastermind in meltdown is ripe to slips ups, and I told you I have a plan. Or he will hurt someone else and find a way to pin it on you, Kayla added. Kayla's eyes looked as scared as a chihuahua in a pit bull pen, making her even cuter. I felt puberty kicking at my knees. I don't think Kurt is going to hurt anyone else, I said. You mean you think he's going to bring the fight right to you, Ralphie said? Maybe you need a little help, Andy. I could make sure Brewer knows it would be better if he kept his hands to himself. Ralphie, I said, thinking I might just cry if I wasn't a hard-boiled detective. The fact, the fact you want to is great, but you, I looked at Kayla, both of you have to stay farther away from this than my sweet tooth to pickle cake. This will fall apart faster than wet toilet paper if you guys jump in now. No matter how much you want to help or I or Phil, I am in trouble, you need to watch from the sidelines. They, they sat there quiet, wondering what to say. I spoke before anything came to them. I will make you a deal, I said. If this isn't over in two days, we will all walk into the principal's office and tell our stories and take our chances that he will believe us over Kurt. If my plan works, we won't have to. If it doesn't work, Ralphie said, you'll be shipped off to a reality show teen boot camp and it won't matter. We sat and alternately got frame, brain freeze. Kayla said, Handy, why do you have to say stuff like pickle cake and toilet paper? And there's chapter 11, another pretty short chapter. But we find out that Ralphie and Kayla are really good friends. Do you all have any really good friends? I know that we're not able to hang out face to face right now, but are you still staying in contact with them? Are you messaging them with your parents' help? Let me know. It's always good to stay close with your friends. And Handy's got two really great friends who are worried about him. What do you think's gonna happen next? What do you think Kurt is gonna try in order to stifle Handy's credibility at the school? Let me know. I hope you're having a good day. I miss you all. And I hope you'll join me for the next chapter. Bye, friends.